When we think about America and how we fight wars, we think about America always wins. America always goes to war and comes back with something good. But when we think about Vietnam, what exactly did we bring back from Vietnam that's actually good? What's exactly happened in Vietnam that we can say that America won? Um, Vietnam's big thing was the draft. And the one good thing about Vietnam was that we abolished the draft. But to begin with that, the draft itself was not necessarily a good thing. I did the poem by Yusef Komenaka called Facing It. And this poem is about how a soldier goes back to the Vietnam Memorial Wall and he looks upon this wall and he sees all these names and he sees um, himself in, in this wall and he sees people reacting with this wall and all the reactions that come from just this simple wall that is placed because of Vietnam. Um, just some background on this, the Vietnam Memorial. Uh, this woman named Maya Lin designed it based on a cemetery in Denmark. And it was one of the most simple designs that came out from 1,200 different people. Um, she decided to do this because when she went to Denmark, she found this memorial and she called it the architecture of death. And she feels like Vietnam was just a complete wasteland of just death with thousands of different uh, people dying. And 58,022 Americans just based on us. Um, this wall is a black granite that's stretched over like 100 feet or a little more than that. And But it, this granite is like a mirror. And when you look upon this, if you've been there, you can look upon this mirror and you see yourself inside this black granite. And I feel like this is on, uh, she did this on purpose. So you can, you can kind of place yourself inside Vietnam and place yourself with these 58,000, more than 58,000 names uh, on this wall. And the letters on this wall are so small. And it's, unless you're right up next to this wall, you can't even like read the names unless you're right there. And that kind of shows the vastness of what we lost in Vietnam and the amount of people that we lost in Vietnam. And it kind of shows the tragicness of this one war and what exactly the good that came from this war when as Americans, we always find that one thing from every war we've been in that is good. An important thing to learn from uh, Yusef's background, Yusef Komenaka's background is he was a soldier himself. He was an Afro-American soldier in Vietnam. And he went through many of the things that you read in different poetry from all across time, all the, the horrors and fears and all these tragic memories that you, that you read about, he went through them and you can see them in all of his poetry. I, the last poem I did was also a poem from Yusuf and you can see that, you can see the mental uh, destruction that war does to you and he writes a lot about that in his poems. Um, a big thing that I took away was he didn't start writing until about 15 years after um, he came back from Vietnam, but his writing, it was like he were, it happened yesterday. He didn't forget anything, he didn't forget one detail, everything was very clear in his mind and you can tell from his writing that, that he remembers everything, every name that lost, every friend that was lost, uh, everything that was that was dear to him, he still remembers very, very clearly. And this is 15 years later when he decides to start writing poetry. Um, again, with his mental aspects of war, he focuses deeply on these mental aspects because I feel like these are very important to him because these are his memories. These are his stories that he brings back. These are his fears and horrors that he can never let go. Um, the poem itself, um, he starts off by seeing himself in this mirror and he doesn't want to see himself he like turns and hoping hoping the light shines on him enough that he will not be reflected on this mirror and he tries not to cry and then when he he's going down the names and he sees his friend his friend's name andrew and he touches the name but when he touches it he doesn't see the name anymore he sees his friend andrew but he sees his friend andrew with a spark of light when he blew up and his he was dead and gone um at the end of the poem, he, it talks about this mother and how she's, he thinks at the beginning, he's, she's scratching off this, this name, 
but at the end of it, she's actually brushing the boy's hair as if she's inside that wall still with her son. Um, what, what this poem meant to me was what we really bring back from war, what the soldiers brought back, what, what the people here at home, what, they, what the soldiers bring back to them. And at, in Vietnam, it was just death and destruction and there was nothing really good that anybody could find. And this wall symbolizes that. This wall symbolizes that it didn't just affect the soldiers. It affects everybody that goes to this wall and can see themselves inside the wall. They can see themselves inside with the Vietnam soldiers that have died and 58,000 names on that wall. The, back to the mental part of this, this poem is this is just another form of PTSD. And though PTSD was not um, diagnosed in 1980, you, you can see it through many parts of uh, history and poems in itself. And this poem just really brings home what we bring back from war.